Okay, so I hope I think you guys will find this interesting. What we're doing today is the continuation of some of the other things that we've been looking at. So this is a continuation of the North Pole and Mercator's maps and the Arctic exploration stuff that we've looked at previously. So this will just be more on that, a continuation on that. What I've done is, having gone back to look for some of the documents uh, for an upcoming interview, uh, and trying to find those documents again, and look back at the one that I originally read, I've been able to find, not the original, but of course, but I've been able to find some other ones that uh, I had orig originally intended to look at. So, they have some really interesting things in them that will be lots of fun for us to read about and discuss. And of course this all pertains to the Flat Earth and the Dome and the North Pole being the center of our beautiful, beautiful Flat Earth. So, let's get to that. So here we are. The first one we're going to start with is called Secret Voyages. And we're not supposed to have access to this book, supposedly. Look at the ring on her finger. Ooh. Secret Voyages, M-I. Hmm. Hush, hush, double top secret. So, because I'm going to be reading this from Google Books, some portions are going to be cut from it. But here's a general idea of what we'll be talking about over the next little while on my channel. So, history, American discovery, exploration, pre-Columbian voyages, Indians, Native Americans, horses, old world and new world cultural contact, diffusion before Columbus, history, China, Zheng He, Zhu Fu, Zhu Wen, the 1418 Ming map, the history of England, Nicholas of Lynn, John and Sebastian Cabot, Queen Elizabeth, Francis Drake, John Dee, King Arthur, Edward III, Roger Bacon. History, Ancient Bible, Pharaoh Hatshepsut, King Solomon, Solomon's Mines, Ophir, African American, Marco Polo, Pope Clement IV, the Renaissance, Amerigo Vespucci, who many claim that America was named after, Cartography, the history of Mercator, Longitude, Clocks and Navigation, Inventions, the History of, Telescope, Longitude, Compass, Mechanical Clocks, Guns, and Espionage. So I'm going to pause there to talk about something I've been meaning to get out for some time, and I think I'm going to put this movie out because of this. This is something I meant to talk about, about the show Connections and Connections 2. I used to watch it a lot with my parents when I was a young boy, and in that, they talk about that the art of and the science of exploration and of clocks and navigation and cartography were all linked to and aided by the creation and invention of actual mechanical clocks. And what they talked about is that they couldn't properly navigate the oceans and find their proper longitude without a very stable clock. They needed the clock in order to tell how far they had traveled over time in order to tell their actual longitude. And they used the Greenwich Mean, uh, the Greenwich mean Time, GMT. They used that line as their, as their indicator. But what's interesting is that we noticed that that all happened at around the same time. So this book and the portions that we're reading here come from the 1490s up to the 1600s, and we can see that this is a result of a search for 1577. And it was at these times, either way you look at it, the discovery of the new world and discovery of uh, the disco and, and the invention of and, and the, the the formation of the sciences of uh, naval travel are affected by and aided by good sound mechanical clocks. They are intricately tied together. So something that we could speculate about is that the Earth was actually 
um, discovered to be flat, and that that is when we figured out clocks, and that the sun is really the hour hand moving around the earth. So where we are with this is that if you think about a clock and the way that a clock works, we all know this as flat earthers, that actually a clock face is just the flat earth with the sun moving around it in this direction. And the hour hand would just be the sun on the clock. It moves in this direction from east to west around the earth. And so really that is what the clock is and that's what the flat earth really is. So, you know, we could speculate that that we didn't make clocks first, that we had sundials, and that it's only after the discovery of the North Pole and being positive that the Earth is flat and the way that it functions that we actually developed the clock. So I'm going to... So now we'll carry on with the uh, the rest of of what we've been talking about, about, about these uh, ancient voyages, ancient secret historical voyages. So continuing, inventions, history of the telescope, longitude, the compass, mechanical clocks, guns, and espionage. Seven, Indians, the history of, native or indigenous horses, the bow and arrow, the Mongolian bow. Human geography, cultural and plant diffusion, migration, uh, maize, history, Egypt, incense. We won't necessarily go into all these things. This is just a, I thought that was an interesting part to read. I thought you guys might find that interesting. The secret contents. And what we have is a forward by Gavin Menzies. Prologue. Theodore Sabrosa, The Vision of the Pharaoh Queen, Solomon's Heirs, Zhu Fu in the Isle of Fu Sang. So earlier we were talking about where do these false flag people go? What happens to them after they have served their false flag role? Where do they go after that? Interesting, funny they show the globe there. Um, so this Isle of, where is it here? Zhu Fu in the Isle of Fu Sang. Um, and some of the other, Nicholas in the search for Avalon, Zheng He in the Forbidden Land, Martin Beheim, or Beheim, and Terra Incognita, Vespucci's Mundus Novus, Empire of the Virgin Queen, Epilogue, Under the Midnight Sun. So, yeah, where do these people go? Is there an island? Is there a place that they're taking off to? Just another interesting part to talk about. So, that's where we're going to be going. I'm going to be looking through this document and some other documents that reference ancient exploration. This will be another one of them. I'll bring up some of the other parts here. A letter dated 1577 from Mercator to John D. Imago Mundi, Stockholm. The Mercator Atlas of Europe. So there's really a lot of interesting stuff here that we're going to dig into a bit of some interesting more more interesting maps and interesting images to look at I'm just trying to get to a few of them for you here here we go here's the Fusang bit new world geography Fusang we can have a look at this map he's got an indicator here an arrow pointing at something whether that's Japan or the west coast who knows? It talks about it. We'll get into this here. Here we go. Treasure map of paradise. The Isle of Immortals. The ancient Chinese geography is represented in this 19th century printed map from Korea called the Shanghai Jing or Chonhado. The map portrays the old world at the center surrounded by a ring continent of overseas lands. This is a symbolic type of map that was intended to represent the approximate locations of major countries. The names used to identify geographical places such as Uncle Dragon Country or Heavenly Mountains reflects the terminology used in the first to third millennium before Christ. So the map's origins are probably very ancient. The map clearly shows that the legendary Fusang or the Isle of Immortals was situated all across, all the way across the Pacific Ocean beyond Japan. The circle near the center represents the capital of China. Shown above are the yin-yang symbol, the serpent turtle of Zhenwu, Polaris or the god of the north, 
and a legendary symbol for the Ling Chi mushrooms that we'll get into shortly. Very interesting discussion there that they were actually searching for um, that the Chinese found North America and the Mexicans searching for uh, ancient mushrooms to get high on to be able to see the future and to be proper shamans, powerful shamans. So that's some of the more of the, of the interesting stuff that we'll get into here. So this is their some of the artwork and depictions after they met with the the Mexican inhabitants. We can see some of those Aztec inspired artwork and some of the stuff down the side here. And this all links up with the ancient um, uparts and the ancient stuff that we've looked at on my channel quite a bit. So that's what we'll be getting into uh, very shortly uh, at Flatwater. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll